It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be with you. Amen. We are thankful, amen, that we were able to come and celebrate with Pastor and Sister Bodie. We love these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Thank God for them. And uh, I came this close, I came this close to messing it all up. Uh, Brother O'Brien had talked to me over a year ago, and uh, I had, I think, about three contact numbers in my phone for Brother O'Brien, and we were trying to finalize tickets and details, something I needed to call him for. And I called one number, I think it was a cell phone, and I, I didn't get any. It didn't get any answer on the cell phone, though. And so then I called another number, and I was assuming it was the home phone. And uh, so I called Brother O'Brien's house, and uh, a lady said, Hello? I said, Sister Bodie? <laughs> Sister Bodie <laughs> answered the phone at Brother O'Brien's house. She was over there with the children, and hey, amen. I... I uh, I had to think real fast. <laughs> Amen. That was that was several months ago, and she said, "Brother Boswell," and uh, I said, "Oh, I just Brother O'Brien had asked me about something. Uh, I was trying to get back to him." Praise, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Amen. I just kind of skirted around the issue. Praise God. Amen. But God was good, and we're thankful to be here. I think yesterday was the first time I've ever driven. I've been here a few times, but I think yesterday was the first time I've ever driven in California. And um, I was in Pastor Bodie's truck while they were going in the candy shop, and so to my Mississippi self, I said, I'll just circle around the parking lot and come back. So I circled a few times, and I stopped. There was a white van that had backed out in front of me, and I stopped to let them finish backing out and go forward, and I we got hit in the in, from behind. <laughs> so that was my first. So there was a very nice BMW that the hitch of Brother Bodie's truck went through the front of that nice BMW. So his truck's fine, but amen. And we were all good, but amen. Um, that was my first driving experience. I He came out of the candy shop and tried to get me to keep driving. I said, no, I've already had one accident. You're getting back in the driver. <laughs> You're getting back in the driver's seat. Praise God. But God is good. We're glad to be here. Don't you love brother and sister Bodie? Aren't these tremendous folks? Amen. God bless them. Thank you to uh, brother and sister O'Brien. All the ministry here, we honor you. All the church family, thank God for you. We honor you, brother and sister Knox, for making the trip over. We honor you. Amen. That sweet, sweet family and their photography yesterday. We honored them. Amen. The cooking on Thursday night when we went over to the house, the cooking last night, tremendous top of the line. Thank you so very much. Amen. God is good. There's nothing like being in God's kingdom among God's people. Amen. And being a part of the family of God. Amen. I'm going to just mention something really quick. Amen. As far as prepared notes, and then I'm going to move into the Word of God, for which I have no prepared notes. Um, but I will remember that uh, when Sister Basel and I first came to assist the Bodies fresh out of Bible college, actually, Sister Basel was finishing her last year of Bible college, and uh, we came to assist the Bodies, and then we, we came to eventually take uh, and oversee their church school. And um, I didn't know what I was doing as far as running the school. When I came to Pastor Bodie one day, and I said, I said, we've got problems. And he said, nah. He said, we don't have problems. He said, we just have challenges we hadn't found the answer for yet. And so the thing, one of the things I most appreciate about 
Pastor and Sister Bodie is they have always had a can-do attitude. They see a challenge and they say, there's got to be a solution to this around here somewhere. And then if I had a $100 bill for every meal that Sister Bodie has prepared for us and every, she's an encourager, every encouraging word that she has given to us. I tell you, we just built a new church sanctuary out here today. Praise God. But we love them very, very much. And on that line, there was a man that was, Oh, profound scientific wisdom. His name was Simon Newcomb. And he demonstrated why man could not fly. He said he not only proved that trying to fly was nonsense, but he went further and showed that even if a man did fly, he wouldn't dare to stop because once he slackens his speed down, he begins to fall and into the area where he stops. He falls a dead mass. Nobody knows who Simon Newcomb is, but everyone knows that the Wright brothers took the first recorded flight. They were people that said, we got a can-do attitude. I think we can do this. Of Edison's light bulb, a scientific uh, man uh, named Henry Morton of Stevens Institute of Technology predicted the, in, the invention would be a conspicuous failure. He was... He was one that, that did not believe that, that it, would, it would ever work. A British parliamentary committee said that this was unworthy of the attention of practical or scientific men, and we know how that f turned out. Mr. Edison had a can-do attitude. In 1876, there was a Scottish-born man named Alexander Graham Bell became the first inventor to be granted a patent for the telephone. Bell approached an American communications company and offered them the rights to his patent for $100,000. The company said, there are obvious limitations to this device. It is hardly more than a toy. Less than 10 years later, already 150,000 people were owners of a telephone. In 1933, following the flight of a 10-seater Boeing 247, an engineer that is reported to have claimed there will never be a bigger plane built than this 10-seater. And we know how that turned out. In 1899, the Literary Digest magazine had this to say about automobiles. The ordinary horseless carriage is at present a luxury for the wealthy, and although its price will probably fall in the future, it will never, of course, come into common use as the bicycle. Four years later, a Detroit lawyer named Mr. Rockham was advised by the president of the Michigan Savings Bank that the horse is here to stay, but the automobile is only a novelty, a fad. Thankfully, Mr. Rockham ignored his advice and bought stock in the Ford Motor Company in 1908. Ford Motor Company designed the Model T automobile. In 1949, after the world's first stored program computer, uh, small-scale experimental machine, uh, the Hungarian-American mathematician, he decried this, and he said, we have reached the limit of what is possible to achieve with computer technology. That was in 1949. Ken Olson, founder of the computer company Digital Equipment Corp, said in 1977, there is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. Though by 2012, 80% of American households own the computer. I want to have a can-do attitude when it comes to the kingdom of God. With God, all things are possible. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap for praise this morning. <laughs> praise God. If you have your Bibles, I'm quickly reading from the Word of the Lord. Isaiah chapter number 36. Amen. Isaiah chapter 36. I want to begin reading with verse number 13. Amen. Isaiah chapter number 36, verse number 13. Thankful my wife, my daughter are with me. Amen. Today, the Bodies mean so much to them as well. Amen. Isaiah 36 and verse number 13, Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord... 
will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and eat ye every one of his vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his own cistern, until I come, notice this, verse 17, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land. A land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. It's going to have corn, but it's not Canaan's land. It's going to have wine, but it's not Canaan's land. It's going to have bread, but it's not Canaan's land. It's going to have vineyards, but it's not Canaan's land. Uh, I'm going to come and take you away to a land that's like your own land. Beware, verse 18, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods, little g, of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the gods of Sephar of Iam? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of these lands uh, that have delivered their land out of my hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. But they held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, Answer him not a word. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, that was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asap, the recorder, to Hezekiah the king, with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Reb Shekha. Amen. I want to talk to you about this subject this morning. There is no substitute for Canaan's land. There is no substitute for Canaan's land. Would you look to the Lord with me? Lay your Bibles down. Let's lift our hands. God, we magnify you this morning. We need your help, God. We need your anointing. We need your blessing, your favor in this house, God. Anoint these lips of clay. Anoint this pulpit. Anoint the heart, the mind, the ears to hear, God. God, we magnify you. We glorify you. We pray your will be done. In this place, give the Lord a hand clap this morning before you're seated. Oh, let's magnify the Lord together. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Anybody feel the Holy Ghost today? Praise God. You can be seated. God bless you for standing. Amen. This is amen. King Hezekiah. This is the nation of Judah. This is latter years, way past the days of David, but it is in the lineage of King David that Hezekiah has continued on in the lineage, and he is ruling, and he is reigning over the nation of Judah with the capital being Jerusalem. And as Assyria is conquering nations and they are defeating other kings of other nations, they make their way toward Judah and Jerusalem and they approach they approach the nation with their uh, leaders. Um, I have studied, scholars say that, that these names that are used, and you can also read this uh, uh, previous in the Old Testament, I believe it's 2 Kings, uh, but these, these names that they used of Rebshakeh and Tartan and, uh, and Rebsaurus, that these were not actual names of people, that these were titles like governor and senator, that these were people that were high up in the hierarchy of the Assyrian government, and they came uh, to try to make a deal and reach an agreement with uh, the children of Judah. They begin to meet with the higher ups in Hezekiah's regime, uh, and so they met out by the wall and they begin to uh, do business and they begin to talk. And the leaders from Assyria uh, begin to present the opportunity. They they begin to try to make the bargain. They said, "If you will, if you'll come and uh, you will make an agreement with us, if you'll make a deal with us." But you and I know that you can't make a deal with the devil. They, they said, make a deal with us, and uh, here's what we'll do. We'll just kind of leave you alone uh, until we come and we take you away uh, 
unto a land uh, that's similar or it's like your own. It's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be similar to Canaan's land, but it's not going to be Canaan's land. Uh, there's gonna be vineyards there. There's gonna be corn there. There's gonna be wine there. Uh, there's gonna be fig trees there. Uh, there's there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of stuff that is a little bit familiar to you, uh, Abraham. But it is not going to be Canaan's land. Amen. I would tell you today that what I felt for this service is the fact that that the devil is so clever of offering people a counter, uh, amen, uh, offer to, to God's kingdom. Uh, he is so clever at offering to people uh, a, a cleverly made counterfeit, if you will, uh, of what God desires for us to truly have. Uh, he did this through all, uh, amen, of the, the Old Testament. When when Moses came before Pharaoh, he and his brother Aaron, and they, they threw down the rod. Uh, it isn't long before we find that the magician of Egypt, they come uh, and they throw down their rods and they turn uh, into serpents like Moses and Aaron's rod turned into a serpent. Uh, God says to them, stretch out your hand over the waters and as they stretch out their hand over the waters, uh, amen, we find that the waters become blood. But it's not very long after that where Pharaoh calls his magicians in uh, and with their enchantments, they find out that they can also turn water uh, Amen. Into blood. And so the enemy is carefully putting forth uh, a counterfeit copy uh, of what God was doing. Uh, and we come to the next one and we find out uh, amen that he says bring frogs upon the land and they bring frogs upon the land uh, and then the magicians they bring frogs upon the land uh, and they have another duplication of the miracles that Moses and Aaron uh, are performing. Uh, amen. But we also find that there is a limit uh, amen to the devil's power and to the devil's kingdom. Uh, we find out in the next miracle there's a there's a plague of lice uh, and the magicians try their best uh, but they come back to Pharaoh and they said we can't duplicate this one uh, because these, uh, these men have just taken something lifeless uh, and made something alive out of it. Uh, we can't duplicate this one. Uh, amen. We're not up to the task. Uh, they said this must be nothing else uh, but the finger of all. Almighty God. And so we find out that even in their counterfeit uh, copies that they cannot uh, duplicate the power and the working of God. Uh, as a matter of fact we find that when their rods hit the ground uh, and they turn into serpents. Uh, amen. That Moses and Aaron's rod it quickly swallowed up. Uh, amen. The magician's serpents. Uh, it lets us know that there is uh, a superior serpent. Uh, there is a superior superior power, uh, amen, uh, and it is the kingdom uh, of Almighty God. Uh, I'm glad I'm in the kingdom today. Uh, I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. Praise God. As a matter of fact, uh, amen, Jesus said it like this. Uh, he said the kingdom of God is like treasure that is hid uh, in the field. Uh, he said the man, when he finds it for the joy thereof, uh, he goes and sells all that he has uh, and he buys the field. Uh, I'm so glad there were some people that bought the field one day uh, and said we're glad, uh, amen, we found the joy uh, that is only found uh, in the kingdom of God. But the devil has cleverly done this through the years. He tried to offer Israel, amen, a counterfeit copy when they were in the wilderness. Uh, there was a golden calf that they had the opportunity uh, to worship and to sell out to. Uh, they had Jehovah God on one hand. Uh, they had the golden calf on the other hand. Uh, amen. Years went by in the days of Elijah. Amen. There was another opportunity. Uh, there was the God named Baal, the false god. Uh, amen of the Canaanites uh, a God of no demands if you will uh, they had the opportunity to serve him uh, or they had the opportunity to serve Jehovah God uh, amen you see love is not really love until you have a choice 
Amen. If you don't have any choices and you just got to do this, you see it wasn't really hard for Adam and Eve, uh, amen, to figure out if they loved one another because they that was the only options, all right? Uh, amen. There was no other opportunities. But what God did uh, is he put a tree in the garden. He said, now you've got a choice. Amen. You love me or you take this choice. And so love is not really love until there is a choice that is presented. And so all throughout the Old Testament, there was a choice. You choose Egypt, amen, or you choose to be delivered with God. Amen. You choose the golden calf or you choose to worship Jehovah God. You choose Baal worship or you choose Jehovah God. Things didn't change when they got to the New Testament. Uh, Amen. We still have a choice. As a matter of fact, things kind of and kind of got really interesting when they're standing before uh, the Jewish mob uh, and they say, uh, "Do, do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? That, that name Bar means son. That, that name Abbas means, or Abba means father. And so you've got, on one side, you've got Jesus, uh, the son of God. Uh, on the other side, you've got uh, Barabbas, uh, or uh, if you want to break it down, the son of the father. And if you go back and study it, there are theologians uh, that have good groundings to say uh, that they believe that Barabbas' first name was Jesus. Uh, and through the study and the commentaries that I've read and dug out. And so if that's the case, on one side, uh, you've got Jesus, the Son of the Father, uh, and on the other side, you've got Jesus, the Son of God. You've got a choice, uh, amen, uh, of whether you want the real deal uh, or you want the counterfeit copy. Amen. On, on one side, you've got a man that he, he, the Bible says that he was wanted for murder in the insurrection. That means uh, that they were trying to overthrow the government uh, so that they could set up an earthly kingdom. Uh, amen. But on the other side, uh, you've got one that's overthrowing the devil uh, because he's setting up a heavenly, uh, a spiritual kingdom. Uh, I want to tell you today, I'm not interested uh, in setting up uh, things that are built in the earthly. Uh, I'm glad that this church was built uh, from a sound from heaven. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, It did not come from below, but it came from above. Uh, Hallelujah. And so we have a choice today. Uh, Amen. We can choose Barabbas uh, and we can set on our earthly kingdom and set up our earthly kingdom. Uh, Amen. Or we can choose Jesus. Uh, Amen. The Son of God. uh, The heavenly kingdom. Uh, Amen. But I'm just going to tell you today, uh, you're never going to find in Barabbas uh, what you find in Jesus, uh, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. You're never going to find, amen, in Barabbas uh, what you're going to find in Jesus, the real Son of God. Come on and clap your hands into the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Egypt was a type of bondage. You know this. It was a type of the world. It was a type of sin. I feel like preaching a little while this morning. Amen. It was a type of living under the yoke of a taskmaster and slavery and building temples to false gods. It was a type, amen, of living in a worldly condition of transgression and being bound and being in a dark place and bidding, doing the bidding and the orders of Pharaoh. Amen. That was a choice that they had. Amen. Or they could choose to be delivered. Then they had the choice of the wilderness. The thing that was different about the wilderness is they were out of Egypt. They were out of that slavery and bondage. Amen. But God never designed them to stay in the wilderness. Even though they saw God's provision and they had God's provision, they had not yet inherited God's promise. 
was. Uh, they were seeing miracles every day, uh, and it was a sign uh, of God's provision. Uh, but God doesn't want us to just live uh, in his provision. Uh, amen. Somebody living on the street corner uh, can pay their tithes uh, and find God's provision because he'll bless them uh, according to his word. Uh, but he doesn't want them to just live uh, in the provisions. Uh, he wants us to step in uh, to the promise. Oh, hallelujah. And so they had the choice uh, of the wilderness, of living in the wilderness, uh, amen, of dealing with, uh, amen, that. That was their choice. They could have just went on living in provision. But God gave them a better place, Canaan. Canaan wilderness is a type of wandering. It's a type of not inheriting the promises of God. It's a type of being stagnant. It's a, it's a type of being stationary. It's a type of, of not really achieving what God would desire us, the level that he would desire us to go to. But Canaan's land was different. Canaan's land, I don't believe, was a type of heaven. There are going to be no giants to fight in heaven. Amen. There's going to be no battles in heaven. I don't believe Canaan was a type of heaven, but I, I believe Canaan was a type of living victoriously in the Holy Ghost. I believe Canaan, because there was walled cities and there were giants to fight, uh, amen. And then there was all of this, but at the same time, uh, there was also vineyards that they didn't plant uh, and there were cities that they did not build, uh, amen. There were houses uh, that they were going to inhabit, uh, amen, that they never lifted one finger to put that house together, uh, amen. Canaan's land was a type uh, of living victoriously uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, it was a type of in inheriting not only God's provision uh, but inheriting God's promises. God said this is where I want you to be. Uh, this is where I want you to live. Uh, but now the enemy is coming to Israel uh, and they're saying we'll make you a deal. Uh, you don't really have to live here. Uh, you don't have to really enjoy these blessings uh, of your own fig tree and your own olive vineyard. Uh, amen. You don't have to really enjoy. Come on away with us and make an agreement with us uh, and submit to us. Uh, amen and we'll bring you over to a land. It'll be kind of like your land, but it won't be your land. And so the devil cleverly tries to offer people, amen, a counterfeit religion. Somewhere, I'm sure today, I don't keep up with it, but sure, somewhere today there's somebody standing in a stadium uh, clapping their hands. There's somebody that their voice is going to be stripped out before the day's over because they're yelling, amen, for their favorite team. They're making a lot of noise. They're jumping around. They're running. They're, some of them are cutting flips and throwing throwing objects, and, and, and they're giving it everything they got. And don't think you they, they didn't give an offering to get in there. They gave an offering to get in there, and, and it's just it's kind of peculiar to me that it all usually is happening on Sunday. What do you think that is? I tell you what I think it is. Uh, it's a filler. Uh, amen. It's a counterfeit. Uh, amen. It's just something. Uh, amen. Yeah, they get to clap their hands. Yeah, they get to feel good. Uh, yeah, they get to lift their they, uh, they get to yell and to scream. Uh, amen. But it's not Canaan's land. Uh, it's just a substitute. Uh, amen. It's just a filler. Uh, amen. It's got a lot of fluff, uh, but there's nothing real to it. Uh, amen. It's got a lot of interest. Uh, Amen. But it's not genuine. And so on and on. And I'm not here to, here to pastor you today, obviously. What do you think Santa Claus is? Come on, folks. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you are awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be... You've heard that song too. He gives good things away. He can be seemingly almost all over the whole world in one night. Now don't get nervous. I'm not preaching against Christmas. I love Christmas. Bring me a present anytime you want to. 
like all the decor and the the good music. But what what is what is he? He's he's some people take that as a substitute. Are you with me today? It's just a substitute. It's just, why do you think people get caught up in the charismatic movement? It's just a, it's just a cheap substitute. There's no substance. Uh, most of those congregations only last about three years uh, in their totality. Uh, and then they fizz out. Uh, because when they get to the bottom of it, they realize, uh, amen, there, there's nothing genuine. It's all a show. It's all a put on. They do the same thing but he, with, with Superman. You ever thought about it? Think about it. One moment, he's just a normal man. He's fully man. Can I preach to you a little while? The next minute, he's supernatural. You can go look it up. That's why his name is not only Clark Kent, but his name is Cal L. K A L dash E L. Well, you Pentecostal folks know what L means. That's the same, that's the same root word that's found in Ezekiel and and Israel and Danai. L, amen, Uh, that is uh, the Hebrew word uh, for God. That, that's why his name, he, he, they, they named him Cal L, which supposedly means uh, the voice of God. You can go look it up. And, and, and he's man one minute, uh, and he's supernatural the next minute. Uh, and and I, 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 you just, just go, go look it up. Uh, and he was created uh, by two Jewish men. And he's got a big S on his chest. And, 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 but I just want to tell you, amen, my Savior doesn't parade around in, 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 in purple tight pants. Uh, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, amen. But for some in the world, uh, it's just a cheap, uh, it's a cheap substitute. Uh, it's something to fill the space with. Uh, it's something to fill their life with. Uh, amen. It's a clever counterfeit uh, that's supposed to be able to stop crime and do good good, amen, and do all of these supernatural things. I'm just telling you, if you allow the devil, he'll say, amen, all that worship's not necessary. All of that tongue talking's not necessary. All, all of that hand clapping's not really necessary. Amen, all of that praying and fasting, oh, it's not really necessary. If you'll come with me, we'll go over to a land. It's kind of like your land. Amen, it's similar to your land. You'll get to clap your hands every once in a while. You'll get to shout and lift your voice every once in a while. But there's something within me, amen, that echoes the words of pastor that says no a thousand times. No, I don't want a cheap substitute. Amen. I don't want a halfway religion. Amen. I don't want all fluff and no substance. I want something like we've got in this house this morning. Come on, somebody. Help me preach a little while. I want something that's real. I want something that's genuine. I want something you can feel. I want something that's got substance. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Come on, clap your hands with me. Hallelujah. Don't listen to the lie of the adversary. Don't listen to the lie of the devil uh, that says, come on over. Uh, amen. Just sell out. Uh, amen. For Why do you think people are doing drugs? Yeah, they get a little high, but it's just a filler. Uh, it's a counterfeit copy. Uh, amen. It's a dead-end road. Uh, amen. You never end up at the right place uh, with heroin, heroin and fentanyl. Uh, amen. Uh, but for instance, it's just a cheap substitute. 
But there is nothing uh, that will ever take the place uh, of a genuine uh, move uh, of God. Uh, hear me today. Uh, there is nothing uh, that will ever take the place uh, of the real uh, one God, uh, Jesus' name, uh, apostolic church. Uh, there is nothing, uh, amen, that will ever be able to fill the void, uh, amen, of God's true church. Uh, I'm glad I'm in the kingdom. Uh, I'm glad I found the treasure that is in the field. Uh, I'm glad I found something that is real. Why don't you lift your hands and love the Lord? Oh, I magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, help us, Lord, right now. Help us, Lord, right now. Come on, let's just pray a minute. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get what you pay for. You go buy a cheap computer, that's what you got. It's a cheap computer. That's why we were always down at Best Buy trying to plug them in, get the geek squad to fix them because we bought a cheap computer. If you buy the genuine, if you buy the real, they tell me that people that work in the banking industry they, they, they have to teach them to look out for counterfeits, but they don't get a row of counterfeits and line them out in front of them and say, you feel this counterfeit and feel this counterfeit and feel this guy. No, they give them the real. Uh, and if they handle the real long enough, uh, the instant a fake 20 goes through their fingers, uh, they automatically know uh, there's something wrong. We ought to be so close to God in prayer. Uh, we ought to be so prayed up. Uh, we ought to be in His Word so much. Uh, amen. That the instant... Uh, the Bible said, try the spirits, uh, whether they be of God or not. The instance we feel the fake and the phony, we back up and say, something don't feel right about that. Uh, there's something. The instant they start, uh, the instant they start bringing out a three God, uh, amen, uh, a persuasion, uh, you back up and say, I know there's something wrong with that. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God uh, is one Lord. Uh, I want the real. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There is no substitute. Don't make a deal with the devil. I said, don't make a deal with the devil. Don't, don't. You see, you were created in the image of God, and because we were created in the image of God, there is only, there's, a, there's something within us that only God can feel. And it doesn't matter who you are, or what your name is, or where you come from, what color of skin you got, you have value. He said, he said, you are more value than many sparrows. But what he said about sparrows is, he says, he, he visits every sparrow's funeral. He said, they can't fall to the ground without me knowing about it. And he said, you're worth a whole lot more. You're worth a whole lot more. I, I, seen a, I, I saw a friend of mine do this. But I feel it in my message today. There's a $20 bill. And it's worth $20. But what if I take it and I crumble it up? Would you still take it? Why? Because it's still worth $20. What, what, if, what if I took it and, and I put all 100 none of your business pounds And I just stepped on it and I ground it into the carpet. 
put my shoe print on it and left marks and dirt. Would you still take it? It's still what? It's still worth twenty dollars. What? What if I crumbled it up so small and I, I I put it in my mouth? I'm not going to. And I just mutilated it. I'd still take it because it's still worth twenty dollars. But there's a lot of people walking around. They're saying, I'm not worth anything. I don't have any value. I'm no good. I've been through so much. I've been mutilated. I've been done wrong. I've been stabbed in the back. I've been treated wrong. If I was worth anything, why did I have to go through all of this? But I'm preaching to you in the Holy Ghost today. If you ever get a hold of the real deal, if you could ever repent of your sins and be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, you would recognize the fact, hey, uh, I'm made in the image of God. Uh, I'm made in his likeness. Uh, amen. I'm like him. Uh, praise God. Uh, I have value. Doesn't matter what I've been through. I'm in the image of God. Uh, anybody feeling what I'm feeling today? <laughs> Don't trade out. Somebody said, well, why are all of these religions in the world? Because God wanted you to have a choice. Because love is not really love unless you have a choice. That's why you may really, 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 really like Susie, but 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 they're 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 Shelley and they're uh, they're Shirley uh, and, and they're Sheila and, and you're looking around, uh, Amen. And you prove, uh, Amen. You really love that one uh, because you say, "I choose you uh, and I'm going to stay with you." And you're looking around and there's Catholicism uh, and you're looking around uh, and there's Mormonism uh, and you're looking around uh, and there's Buddhism, uh, Amen. And there's all kind of choices. Uh, amen. But when you dig in his word uh, and you find spirit uh, and then you find truth uh, and you find the, you figure out, amen, there's nothing, there's nothing on the face of the earth, uh, amen, that's like this. I'm trying to hurry. I was preaching in Tucson, Arizona uh, many, 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 many years ago. I was preaching in Tucson, and um, the pastor was gone. I, I was actually evangelizing, but I knew the pastor well, and he had to be gone that service. They were going to out of state to an ACE convention, Christian school convention. And uh, and so I was I was preaching that morning and filling the role and, and doing and, and filling in and, and everything. And, and as I was preaching, I was just preaching a little simple message about the power of the name of Jesus uh, and there was a man that had invite, been invited by a young lady and he came to that service uh, and, and we found out afterwards that this man was a practicing uh, he was a practicing Muslim uh, and he was in that service uh, but there's something about the power of the name of Jesus that unlocks doors and so at the end of the service, he responded. He came up to one of the assistant, uh, assistants to the pastor, and he said, he said, I want to be, be baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, he said, I saw it uh, while we were having church. Uh, he said, I got a revelation. Uh, he said, I need to be baptized uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. Well, that night he came. They got the baptistry ready. Uh, amen. The assistant pastor, he baptized him in the name of Jesus. Uh, he, he repented of his sins. Uh, he came up out of the water. Uh, about five minutes later, uh, God filled him with the Holy Ghost. He started speaking in other tongues. Pastor got back, started talking to this man. He said, "He said I want to. He said I want to tell you something, Pastor. He said 
He said, I served. He said, I served Allah faithfully. And he gave the amount of years. It was many, many, many years. I think it was 12 years uh, that he had been a Muslim. He'd been serving, he'd been serving Allah. He said, but I want to tell you. He said, I had a room in my house. Uh, he said, and I have a closet. Uh, and he said, it was halfway stacked full uh, uh, of pornographic materials uh, in that closet. It was halfway up the wall full uh, of pornographic materials. Uh, and he said, in 12 years uh, 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 of serving and Allah. He said, I never could get deliverance uh, from all of that. Uh, he said, but when I got baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, and he said, I was filled, uh, amen, with the Spirit, uh, amen, of God. Uh, he said, I went home. Uh, he said, I cleaned all of that closet out. Uh, he's, it's gone. Uh, he said, all of those years of serving, 12 years of serving Allah could not deliver me, uh, but five minutes in the presence of Jesus. Uh, I'm going to tell you, when you get a hold of something when you get a hold of something woo, when you get a hold of something that's real come on can you give the Lord a hand clap oh, can you give the Lord some praise hallelujah 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 oh, I feel the Holy Ghost today praise God Praise God. There is no substitute. The devil might be trying to make a deal with somebody today. Well, they clap their hands over here too. Well, they, they lift their voice over here too. It's all fake. It's all a show. It's all just a sham. It's like cotton candy. It, it looks good. It's fluffy, but when you bite into it, it disappears. There's no substance. And they're saying, make a deal. Make a trade. And thankfully, the men who were sent by Hezekiah would not make an agreement. They went back to Hezekiah and they told him, their clothes were rent. Some say that were that was not that 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 they had positions of of power and they were going by titles too. They were the counterparts to the Assyrians that they had sent to speak against the wall. And they went back and they told him what he said. And Hezekiah brought his petition to the Lord. And the Bible said that God sent one angel. Just one. And when the night was over, there were 185,000 dead Assyrians by one angel. Why are you saying all that? I'm saying if you'll just stick with the real, it may not be going your way right now. But if you'll just stay with what's right and what's true... Amen. And what is divine and what is holy. Amen. God has a way of turning the tables on the enemy. Woo. God has a way of bringing you out. God has a way of making a way where there seemeth to be no way. Amen. In the meantime, the devil's going to try to get you distracted. Amen. But you've got to just stay in Jerusalem. You've got to stay in the church. You've got to keep camping in Canaan's land. you just got to keep playing your spiritual harp. you just got to keep coming to church and singing the songs of Zion. you just got to keep coming to the prayer room, even when it's hard to pray. You just got to keep coming uh, and saying, uh, I'm going to keep dressing right. I'm going to keep talking right. I'm going to keep praying right. I'm going to keep living right. Amen. I'm not going to get filled up on Hollywood. I'm not going to get filled up on some worldly uh, influence. Praise God. But I'm sold out. Why don't we lift our hands and love the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody's got to say, I want the real. Come on, there's a real Holy Ghost that operates. I'm almost finished. And I hesitate to tell this story because you're going to think me crazy, but it really happened. There was a lady that showed up to the church that I pastor one time. And my Holy Ghost radar was going off. There was something just wasn't quite right about her. We offered her a Bible study. This has been several years ago. We offered her a Bible study. And uh, Sister Boswell and I, we'll meet you. We'll teach you a Bible study. So I'm on a Bible study. And she she kept making comments that she would like to meet Sister Boswell by herself. And so she would keep dropping those comments in. And so I wasn't quite sure about her. So she showed up one night during prayer meeting before church, and I was praying. I said, God, now I've got a bunch of precious children here, teenagers and people that I'm responsible for their safety. I said, if this lady wants to repent, I said, I'm here. If she wants to be real, I'm here to help her get real. I said, but if if she she is a wolf and she's here to destroy people's life, I said, Lord, would you would you just give her stomach problems? Now, don't get nervous because I don't often go around. I prayed that way maybe two or three times in my life, all right. I said, would you just give her? So I forgot about it. We started church, started singing, started started worshiping. I got up to preach. I looked around. I didn't see her. I looked up. She was coming back from the restroom area. (laughs) She sat down, and she was going... I said, Lord, you know. (laughs) If you want to be real, this is the real deal. It's the real church. It's the real working of the power of God upon the earth. Why wouldn't you want to be in God's church? Why wouldn't you want to be a part of God's kingdom? Don't sell out for some half-hearted prayer. Don't sell out for some Holy Spirit full of grace, 40 chickens in a race, whatever it is. Because it's all just rote and routine. There's no substance. There's no life. But he said, I've come that they might have life. And life more. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Life more abundantly. I don't want to trade. I don't want to compromise. I don't want to make an agreement. I don't want to slip away from these precious truths of one God in Jesus' name and Holy Ghost and filling and tongue talking and spiritual gifts. I'm talking about the real spiritual gifts. I don't want to slip away from holiness. 
I don't want to slip away. Hallelujah. I know, amen, there, there's, there's only two genders. It's male and female. I'm glad I know that today. I don't want to slip away from these eternal truths. Uh, I'm not going to. Is that the way you feel today? Come on, is there anybody that stand to your feet and say, amen, that, that's what I believe. Uh, amen, is there anybody stand to your feet and say, I'm not going to compromise with the enemy? I'm not here to make a deal with the devil. I want the real. I want the genuine. I'm closing. I know a great man of God. He has blood sugar problems. One day, he hadn't eaten properly. He had taken insulin. His his blood his blood sugar started bottoming out. He was in a shopping mall. He sat down. He sat down on a seat. If you have diabetes and you've ever had low blood sugar, you know the feeling. He sat down. He told his family. He said, "Hurry." He said, "Give me something. Give me something quick." Give me something to eat. They ran over to the candy shop and they bought some chocolate candy and they ran back and they gave it to him and, and, and he ate it. And five minutes later, he was still sitting there like he was about to melt into the floor. And they got to looking and they figured out that they, they ran and bought him sugar free. wasn't real. There's no real sugar. It didn't help him. And there's a lot of things you're going to find. I'm preaching a little bit evangelistically today. I wanted to give honor to whom honor is due. But I also wanted to preach to the church today. There's a lot of things in this world. They're not going to help you. It's all a sham. It's all a mirage. It's all fake. It's a road to nowhere. But I feel the one which was, which is, and which is to come. I feel him in this house. And he's real. He's genuine. When you touch him, there's something that touch you, touches you back. And there's no denying. I have just, I have just had an encounter with a creator. There's no substitute for what you feel in this house. I wonder if you'd come today. I wonder if you'd find a place to pray in this altar or front pew. You need the Holy Ghost? You can have the Holy Ghost today. Just come repent of your sins. You need a blessing? The God of blessing is here today. Oh, the God of favor is here today. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, saints of God. Let's fill these altars. Would you lay your hand on somebody's shoulder where it's appropriate? Would you lay your hand on your sister and pray for her? Oh, would you lay your hand on the shoulder of a brother and pray for him today? Oh, in the name of Jesus. And when the darkness falls, it won't Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, and my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm going to see a victory. Oh, I'm going to see a victory. 
Try. 